Honkai Star Rail is a turn-based RPG released in 2023 by Hoyoverse and has quickly become one of my favourite games to play on a daily basis. The game has a thrilling yet exciting storyline with loads of wacky and fun characters, but what it does have is most of all it has really exciting boss fights. And so in today's video we're going to be ranking all the boss fights. But of course before we start we need to lay some ground rules. What classes is a boss fight and what are the exceptions? According to the wiki there are two types of boss fights. There are regular boss fights and there are Echo of War. Echo of War are bosses which you can refight any time on the map and they often give you a material which you need to ascend character traits and talents. Now, uh, now that we've got those out of the way, the character, bo the bosses and the Echo of War, we're going to be combining it to one and ranking them all in this video. Yes, there might be discrepancies where people might di disagree that Echo of War don't count as regular boss fights, as they may be ranked higher, as they may be more thrilling, but we're going to be ranking them all anyway. Now, the discrepancies. Some bosses do appear twice, and there are... And there are two bosses which I can think of which do that. Number one is Kokolia. She appears twice uh, in the storyline which you fight her. One is just on her own where she's just like summoning a bunch of random enemies. And the second time is when she has the power of the Stellaron. We're going to be classing those as two different bosses as they are classed by uh, that in the game and on the wiki as well. The second one is the Harmonious Choir. Now you do fight that one twice in the story. However, the the fight doesn't really change apart from adding more phases to the boss. Yes, like the the second half is is like much harder and has much more depths, but we're going to be classing them as one. And with that out of the way, the only other exception is going to be Yan Qing. As in this video, we're going to be purely talking about the, the first time that you encounter a boss in the story. We're not going to be talking about any other times that you may fight them, such as in the simulated universe, or stuff like Apocalyptic Shadow, or, I don't know, Pure Fiction, or something like that. We're going to be purely talking about the first time that you encounter the boss in the story, or a quest. Now, the, the only exception I said was Yan Qing, because technically the first time that you fight him in the story is in the scripted sequence with Blade and Dan. However, that is such a hand-holdy fight that I'm not classing that as the first time that you fight him, as the more, the proper boss fight is when you fight him on the Kafka mission. So, with those rules out of the way, what am I going to be ranking the bosses regarding? Well, first, I want to rank the bosses, obviously, and how fun they are to fight. Uh, how, like, how good do the bosses look, the visuals, obviously the soundtrack that accompanies them. And mainly just how impactful are the bosses on the story. Do they have a, a major impact, like the ones you fight at the end of storylines, or are they just filler content that are just thrown in there to pad out the story? Obviously, those types of things. Now, there are, if I have not miscounted, I do believe that there are 22 bosses on this list. If I have missed any, please let me know. But with that out of the way, please do not get angry with me if your favourite boss is last, and please do not get angry with me if your, your favourite boss is not first. These are purely my own opinion, and I know that many other people's opinions may change. With that out of the way, let's begin. Quick pause here for a second. Uh, I'm adding this in post-production, obviously. Uh, it turns out I was wrong about the whole two bosses exception thing, as there's actually three on this list. Yes, Kokoli and Yan Ching still count, but the other boss, 
that I'm going to be mentioning that I'm going to be counting the second time you fight them is Jepard, because I totally forgot you do actually fight him twice, and the first time is a one way you only get him down to like 30% HP and then it just wins the fight for you, so... Yeah, for the Jepard fight, we are going to be talking about the second time you fight him, which is on the way to Everwinter Hill, so... Bye for now, but back onto the regular video. Alright, at number 22, we have the Abundant Ebon Deer. This boss is just weird. Like, when you, when you first encounter it in the story, it doesn't really have much hype. It just sort of appears out of nowhere while you're doing a quest. And then you run away from it, and then you have to come back and refight it, and then you have to fight it again for the proper time. And this boss is just genuinely a nuisance. I remember when this boss uh, first came out. There was there's loads of videos on YouTube of people saying, "This boss is so hard. How do I beat it? Like, how do I, how do I get past this boss? It's honestly so annoying." And I agree with those fights. Although I didn't have too much trouble with this boss. It is a pain. Now let's break it down, shall we? So in the first phase of the boss, it doesn't really do much. It spawns like this root thing, and if you attack the root, it often counters and attacks you back. And the deer attacks you in not so damaging ways that it's anything to too much trouble. The real trouble comes in with the second phase, where the boss starts summoning about five of these root things, and they all have different effects, such as countering, and the worst one being healing. Yes, it's a boss that heals itself. It's so annoying. I remember, like, when I first fought this guy, I really needed to go to the bathroom, and so... I thought, well, it won't take that long. About another 20 minutes later, I was like, how is this guy still alive? Will you just die already? So yeah, the, uh, the soundtrack that accompanies this boss is it's decent. It's nothing too much to, to snuff out, but overall, I do think this is the weakest boss in the game. But anyway, if you like this boss, I can see why. It has a cool design. And, but apart from that, I can't really say anything else about this boss, so moving on to the next. Coming up on the next three, we have what I like to call the BBT, the Bellabog Trio. Mainly because these bosses are so similar that I do not think that they deserve to be any higher or lower on this list. They aren't bad boss fights, but they aren't great either. And starting off with the Bellabog Trio, we have Jepard. Now, this boss is it's pretty good. Like When you encounter in the story, you j you're just about to go up to the uh, Everwinter Hill. And, of course, Jepard's stopping you. The main problem with this fight is how Jepard works. He counters you a lot. And what I mean by that is he often has this move where after he start after he stops summoning soldiers, he will put up his shield and if you attack him while his shield is up, he will retaliate, which often does a lot of damage if you were doing a lot of damage to him. Which is really annoying. But apart from that, this boss doesn't really have anything else to talk about. Mainly because it's plain, it's simple. I do like what they were going for, but oftentimes it is just annoying. So, moving on. And at number 20, we have Bronya. Now, as much as I love Bronya as a character, her boss fight isn't great. The first time you fight her in the story, she's laughably easy, and of course this is going to be the time that we're talking about. The main attack pattern that Bronya has is that she forwards the, the turns of her soldiers, as well as like buffing them. Which is okay, but that's pretty much it. It's not as annoying as Jepar, like she won't, she won't retaliate and hit you all, all the time. But there's not much else. And at number 19, after Bronya, we have someone very similar being Kokolia. 
Now this is the the first battle with Kakoli, not the other one at the end of the storyline. That will, we'll get to that one much later. The problem with this boss fight is that it's not too similar from Bronya. Obviously, it's way harder. But there's not too much difference. So, in that regard, apart from it just being a harder version of Bronya, I can't give it too much when the later f uh, fight is much better. So, unfortunately, Kakolia just sits here at the number 19 spot along with Bronya and Japard. Gotta love the BBT. But moving on. Alright, next on the list we have Swarm True Sting. First of all, this boss is annoying. A complete annoyance, honestly, if, if I am being honest. But he's annoying in another way. Mainly in the way that I was trying to do the research for this video. Mainly because I know I've faced this guy before many times, but I can't for the life of me figure out when the first time it was that I did fight him, I thought, oh yeah, it was in Swarm Disaster. Nope, turns out that Swarm Troosting complete. So where on earth do you first fight this guy? Well, it turns out it was released in the 1.4 Forgotten Hall. Yeah, I wouldn't know that if I, if I didn't do the research. I mean, I know I've done that, but I didn't know that that was where it first came from. But anyway, aside from that, getting on to the actual boss. Yeah, it's a complete annoyance, mainly because it has one move which is really annoying, and that involves the use of a biology term called mitosis. Which, if you're a biology nerd out there, you'll know that, that it, mitosis is the separation of like two cells that split apart into two. And it's exactly what happens in this boss fight, because if you attack any of the swarms, most often or not, they will split apart and creating more swarms. So you've got to kill them as fast as possible, or just break their shields or something like that. Yeah, this boss is annoying, but it's not the best swarm boss as we will be seeing in a few ranks time. So for now, this is where the lesser swarm true sting goes. Enjoy your time here, swarm true sting. Not sure on why I'm in. I don't think he'd be enjoying his spot, seems like he's fairly low down. <laughs> Alright, going back to Bellabog for number 17, we have Svarog. Gotta love Svarog, the Clara Protection Agency. But as a fight, this fight is pretty simple, if I had to explain. The only like real cool part about this boss is when he uses the hand thing to trap your character rendering them useless but it's not too hard to to free them from the the chamber I mean the only really funny thing about it was when they had the glitch where if a character was trapped uh, in in the hand thing and you went into like the Stats screen too many times. The the character inside was grow humongous. That was funny. But overall, this boss is just it, it's pretty good. It does what it's meant to be in in a Sparrow fight, and you can't expect much. I mean, he does launch rockets at you, which is pretty cool. But you don't really want to kill Sparrow. He's not really like he's not out for blood. I mean, sure he wants to protect Clara, but you can't hate him at the end of the day. He's just a, a big, a big caring robot. And to top it all off, at the end of the boss fight, you have Sampo coming in and saving the day. That for me was truly the pinnacle of this boss fight, even though it was after the boss. But anyway, moving on to number 16, we have the first Echo of War and the first major boss fight that you encounter in the game being the Doomsday Beast. Yes, I know this boss is really easy because it is literally one of the first things that you encounter in the game, but it sets up for everything later. It shows the Trailblazers' true power of the Stellaron and that they are something great, and it sets out what it's supposed to do. It does kind of come out of nowhere, even though you know that the Antimatter Legion are invading her to space station, and all of a sudden it shows up, but as a boss, it 
it's all right. The only reason I put I I put it this high up on the list Ooh, is because it is the very first boss and it is piss easy. I I don't think anyone has actually ever died on this. Like I don't know if you even can die on this. But it's just alright. I mean, if we were talking about the Echo of War version, that would be much better, as that is a true fleshed out boss. But, of course, we are talking about the first time you encounter it, and so it's not much. Next on the list is the Past, Present, and Eternal Show. This boss is just bizarre. Like, you are expecting to come to the end of the Penacony storyline, you're expecting the big bad. And then these three just show up. Out of nowhere, and they are just alright. I mean, I can't say much about them. Their attack patterns are fairly basic. They do have some cool mechanics, but honestly, they are so forgettable. Like, you're just wanting to get to the end of Penacony. And when the, the rest of the Penacony storyline is so great, and you just have these in the middle, it really does feel like padding. But overall, they, they do what they can. They're okay. I can't put them any any higher. Sure, if you like them, then good on you. But I honestly just find these three totally forgettable. Next at number 14, we have Maddened Feishao. This is another type of boss where you encounter a better version of it later. Yes, it's cool. You get to fight Fei Shao in her moon rage state. But there's not much to show here. I do really like Fei Shao's attack patterns, but it's it's pretty simple. The reason I put it ahead of the other bosses is just because everything that comes before it, the huge action sequence, and it's Fei Shao. Come on, she's really cool. But of course that doesn't make the whole boss fight, and there is a better version of it that we were talking about later. So, for now, Madden Face Shao sits fairly high on the list, but I can't put it any lower because it's it's just alright. It's basic, but it does the job. Coming in at number 13, we have the boss that I was really annoyed with before it turned out that everything was okay. That being Memory Zone Memes Something Unto Death. This boss is pretty good. It is a proper boss fight. It does what it needs to be. The problem comes with its slightly annoying attacks. Mainly being where, like Sparog, it will render your allies useless. It will capture them and you've got to attack the whatever thing it keeps them in to break them out. The problem with this is when is later on during the boss fight when it captures multiple of your allies and every single time it does the capsules have much more hit points and pretty much the only way to win this boss fight is by using a DPS character. A character that has splash like Black Swan. I mean yes you do get Black Swan's ability during this which makes it much simpler than any other time you fight it. But it's still really annoying with without a splash character. So with that it, I do think it's annoying, but everything that surrounds this boss is really cool, like the build up to it, how it suddenly appears out of nowhere, captures Firefly, you gotta you gotta help her out. But just because it gave me a heart attack at that one scene where we know what happened, I can't give it much higher. I mean yes I know what happened now and and everything's being resolved. But this boss its design is just so weird. It's like some eyes with like a tail and whatever that its design isn't great. The music isn't that great either. Its attack patterns can be very annoying if you don't know what you're doing. So with that, I, I'm giving it this spot. At number 12, we have the enemy of Sam being at Star Crusher Swarm King Scarabaz Synthetic. Wow, that is a mouthful. Ruan Mei, what have you done by making this thing? This thing is very similar to Swarm True Sting in the fact that it will spawn bugs that, that multiply. The fact that makes it better is that this boss just has so many more cool attacks. 
And the build up to it is way cooler. I can't say much more about it as it's not a great boss. But it does what it meant to be. If you attack it, it spews out more dudes, you keep fighting. It does the job. But I think it's it's this high mainly due to the, the build up of just how cool it is to see this giant bug shadow around it. And the wall that surrounds this bug in the first place. Coming in at number 11, we have the aforementioned Cloud Knight Lieutenant Yan Ching. Yeah, this is the second time you fight him, because the first time he's really easy. And to be honest, this, this fight ain't much easier. Well, it, it is pretty easy, if you know what you're doing. The whole gimmick of this fight is that Yan Ching summons these floating blades that all have random affinities that you've got to that you've got to attack with the right elements to shatter them and causing him to break, otherwise you can't break his shield. In practice, this is a really cool concept. Uh, that's the thing that I mean I mean I should have said in in, in theory, but yeah, in practice it doesn't really work out as if you don't have the right element, then you're pretty much screwed. And you just have to keep attacking him and waiting for him to break his shield. Which just takes a long time is it? and is a massive snooze fest. Yeah, I do, I do like it as it is unique with the floating swords. But apart from that, it's nothing special. Which is why it doesn't make the top 10. And moving on to the top 10, we have Argenti, the true gentleman. This fight is really cool, mainly due to the the music and uh, what happens in the boss fight. Yes, it's similar to Yanqing in the fact that it has multiple things that you can destroy, but I do think that it is much better, mainly to, due to the fact that it's just so freaking funny. I mean, it's Argenti, how could you not love this guy? He's such a total goofbag, and he's coming at you with all his might. The main gimmick of this boss fight is that he has m multiple... I don't even know what they are, like... Pillar things? And they all have random status effects, which they do. Some of them will buff Argenti's attack, some of them will, like, heal him. But if you break these things, they will do that. They will do the opposite to Argenti, like they will hurt him and stuff like that. Which is a really cool concept, and oftentimes Argenti can be quite annoying. The only main the only main drawback with this boss is that it does take quite a long time and is quite hard if you are under levels or you don't have the right team set up, so you will die. It is quite a difficulty curve, but at this point in the story, you shouldn't be really having trouble. So, as long as you know what you're doing and th that you can survive long enough, you will get through this fight. At number 9, we have the giant floating eyeball, Cirrus. I like what this fight is going for. Yes, you technically don't really fight Cirrus directly. The main gimmick of this fight is that you're fighting a bunch of enemies and once you defeat the enemies that will damage Cirrus. It's a pretty cool concept and Cirrus is mainly just in the background buffing and rallying the uh, their allies, but I like it. It has a really cool concept where you're not fighting Cirrus directly and in that case I do think it is a really cool boss fight. Everything leading up to it with Tail and, and the and the whole uh, Foxy and Tail of the Haunted storyline is really good, so that's why this boss is so high up. The only thing that I would discredit I would discredit it for is that it does show up it does show up a lot during the new simulated universe, but obviously I can't talk about that because we're not talking about simulated universe versions. We're talking about the first time you fight it, so Cirrus gets this high. Coming in at number 8, it's all the Zhao Kui's fans' biggest enemy. Yes, it's Boris and Warhead Hule. Hule is a really cool boss. And uh, yes, you technically do fight him twice, but it's basically the same fight every like both times, so of course I'm not I'm not talking about a second time. 
the only main gimmick is that on the second time he he kind of dies easier as he's got poisoned. But yeah, of course we're we're talking about it in the same boss fight. So this boss is quite hard. He deals tons of damage. I remember coming in with my Fushuan, thinking, "Oh, this guy's going to be a cakewalk," only for him to deal like half half health damage and immediately using a skill to regenerate. I was like, "Okay, this guy's no joke. I, I better truly lock in." Yeah, this guy is really cool. I mean, his design is is just a giant freaking wolf. And all the events leading up to him are really cool. Like, when you first see him come breaking out of the cl uh, the Shacklin prison, you're like, okay, this guy is going to be the real deal. And his boss fight truly delivers in that regard. It's really, it, it is pretty hard, but in the same time, it's really enjoyable for, for what it is, which is why I think Hule deserves this high. Coming in at number seven, it's most... Honkai Star Rail YouTubers body pillow. It's Kafka. Yeah, Kafka's fight is pretty good. The main reason I like this fight is because it shows off Kafka's greatest strengths, and she has a really funny move called Dominance, where she inflicts dominance on all your characters, which I just think is really funny. Again, everything surrounding this fight is really cool. Like afterwards, you get the you get the cutscene with Fu Xuan and everything, but the boss itself is just a really good, good and cool boss fight where you have to keep attacking her. But of course, she like breaks your shields. She inflicts dominance on you, which like, stuns your party members for an, uh, certain turns and lowers everything. But overall, this fight is just really enjoyable for where it is in the story. Coming in at number six, it's the it's the really hard boss fight, Fantilia the Undying. This boss fight is where I'm pretty sure most players got their first wake-up call. Yeah, they might have had their wake-up call with the second Kakoli fight, which we're going to get into in a little bit. But this fight is truly hard. I remember coming into this boss fight with my three four stars and like my one five star thinking, okay, this is going to be another boss where it's it's a little bit challenging, but I won't have too much trouble in it. Only to realise that this boss has three phases, and they are all incredibly long, with the transitions in between being really brutal attacks. The, my main grope with this boss is the fact that you, you get given Jing Yuan for, to use in this boss, but oftentimes, I don't know how it is for other players, but, but for me, he would always be the one to die. And if he dies, the boss just ends. Which truly is a run-ending experience. It's really annoying too, because this boss is obviously really long with its three phases. And it's really cool with, with all the spectacles and attacking the flowers to recover skill points. But it gets let down due to the difficulty and the aforementioned Jin Yuan dying. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's the same for everyone. This boss is really hard, so it can't be placed any any like lower down on the tiers. So this is where Fantilia ends up. Coming in at number five, it's all the AO3 enjoyers. The Doctor Ratio shippers also. Ten, the Ten Stone Hearts Aventurina's Stratagems. Wow, this boss is another wake-up call. I remember when this boss released and there were so many people on Twitter complaining about this boss. Yeah, it, it is hard, mainly due to its certain luck factor, but that luck factor is paired in well with, with Aventurine. First of all, the build of this fight is amazing. I really like Aventurine's whole arc with like him being a a, pr uh, a suffering uh, prisoner of war type of thing and then him finally coming up to the stage to show everything he's got and he's truly laying down all the cards because this fight is no joke. Now the main gimmick of this fight is that he will send out these dice blocks which you've got to hit in order to raise your points and if you if you don't get more points than him he will unleash a devastating attack 
Yeah, it sounds pretty cool and all, but in practice it's kind of annoying. Mainly due to the fact with splash characters again. If you don't have a character that can deal splash damage, which would hit multiple dice blocks at once, you're not going to rack up many points. And because the boss, because the points are individual to each character, some characters like healers, such as Ho Ho or Natasha, will get hit most of the time. Now it's not too bad because they are healers, but if they ain't healers, then you're, you're gonna you're, you're gonna die. You cannot survive this this fight without a healer. Trust me. I I tried going in with with like my Fushuan and it it, it it absolutely wrecked me the first time because I just had I had no way to heal. And I imagine that's the the same way for most players. Yes, the the many uh, videos I did see of this fight of people fighting on like TikTok, they were using pretty bad teams, but you can't really blame them when this boss fight when everything before this boss isn't really too challenging. So yeah, this boss is really hard and so I can't give it any lower on the on the tiers. So there you go, Adventurine fans. He's here, enjoy him. Coming in at number four, it's the Shadow of Feishao. Wow, this boss fight is a lot better than Madden Feishao, isn't it? Yeah, this is another case of where the second fight is much better, and it, it is different from the first one. So, yeah, this fight is pretty amazing. I mean, it only came out a few days ago, but yeah, they really cooked with this boss fight. The visuals, the spectacles, all the story leading up to it, with Fei Xiao finally like, fighting herself, it's, it's really good. I can't really say more on that because, yeah, this this boss, it's not, it's not top tier. I'll give it that. There are some annoying parts of it, and it does drag on for a bit too long. But for what this boss does, it does it really well, with all everything leading up to it. So this is why I have to put Shadow of Face out. All right, we're on to the top three, and coming in at number three, we have. Cocolia, Mother of Deception. Wow. Just wow. I'm pretty sure this is what kept most Star Rail fans from giving up on the game. This fight is genuinely incredible. From the music, well, first of all, yeah, the music is incredible. Especially when you get to the second phase and it switches from, from a trap with no return to being wildfire. World's Fire is an incredible song. I, I, li I listen to it every single day, pretty much. It's incredible. I mean, there's, there's so many times where I've seen people praising it, even music artists praising this song. It's so good. And it's one of the only times where this, the, the songs in this game actually have English lyrics compared to something... Uh, like the, I forget it's name, but it's the song that plays while Dan's splitting the ocean, you know that one. But yeah, th this boss, th the music is incredible. And the, the fight itself is also incredible. First of all, you get the preservation trailblazer during this boss, and all the story leading up to that is, is great as well, like, passing on the lands. That's all incredible with the huge space planet scene. And you also get the giant robot that smashes its fist into Kokoli doing massive damage. This fight is incredible and I'm pretty sure it is what kept most of the fan base going. So good on you Kokoli, but you're not truly the best. And finally, number two is the Harmonious Choir, the Great Septimus. Yeah, this boss, the, it, it really surprises you, honestly. The main thing that carries this boss is the twist and the whole story of Penacony. Everything leading up to it, like I explained before with the, like how the past, present and the eternal show thing. You are ready for this fight, you know it's coming, you know this is big. But when you fight it for the first time, it only has one health bar and you think, oh. 
that, that was it. I mean, pretty good, but it was nothing anything special. And then you go through the whole thing with Black Swan and then you realise that like everyone was still asleep and they're under the control of this guy and then you're like, right, this is time. We're going to put this guy in the ground. And then it comes in with hope is the thing with feathers and you're like, what? This this song is incredible. Just everything in this boss fight is incredible. I mean, first of all, yeah, the the song it. This song is incredible. I, I cannot stress it enough how good this song is. It the the lyrics and the the singing, all done by like the R Robins. I don't know her name, I'll put her on the screen. Yeah, she did an incredible job with this, as you can hear the passion burning with every single lyric. And then halfway through where you've got the Astral Express ramming into the face, it's like, yeah, you get what you get someday. You're never going to be playable. Get lost. I'm sorry Sunday fans, do not hate me. I really enjoyed this boss fight. And we can't forget the incredible lines done by the Astral Express members, like, Himiko's especially was, like, the first time I heard it, I was like, Wow, th this girl's on fire. <laughs> she really knows what she's on about. Now, in terms of uh, actual attacks, the, the boss is fairly simplistic, where you get, like, if you break the, the choir notes, then you get more health. But it really comes down to the last phase, where he goes through all like the different days of what happened before finally unleashing a, like a, a giant attack on you. Yeah, this fight is something else, and it, it truly shows the peak of Penacony and Star Rail in general. I do not know how they're going to top this boss in the future. However, for me, it is not truly the the best of what Star Rail has to offer. And that's coming in at number one. And finally, the number one spot has to go to Stellaron Hunter Sam. Yes, I do know that some people might disagree in thinking that the Harmonious Quiet is better. But this fight for me really set the tone. I mean, first of all, yeah, spoilers, it comes after you see Firefly die. So you're wondering... So you're, you're feeling kind of depressed, but you know you have to move on with your head hold high. And then suddenly when you're traveling with Black Swan and Acheron, you see this guy dressed up in, in metal armor, speaking in a deep robotic voice. And then he throws out the flames, and this fight really gets started. Yeah, everything leading up to the boss is what truly sells it. And also the boss itself sells it to me. First of all, we've got to talk about the music again. Nevermore is such a great track. It's such a deafening, but also truly encapsulates what Sam is. Like, spoilers. She is such a great warrior. She is such a great character with, a, with a, such a, a saddening, but also encouraging storyline that, like, Every time she uses Sam, she, she loses a bit of a life force, so she's not going so she's not going to survive that much longer. So she's fighting to what she can get. She's fighting for her dream. And this is what sells the fight. Yes, she does not truly want to kill you. She explains that later on. But that does not hold this boss back in any way. You've got this fight showing off what Star Rail is truly capable of. With the epic spectacle of Sam flying up into the air and then crashing down with multiple flames. This boss is truly epic. Just like an epic gamer that we are. So good on you, Star Rail. I believe that this fight is truly the best fight in the entire game. So keep it up. I hope whatever the next planet offers, it can truly best this. Because so far... This is unmatched. Well, that's uh, that's got that, that was a truly interesting list, wasn't it? I uh, 
didn't expect to be rambling on for so long, but hey, we got through it. I hope you have enjoyed. Thank you for sticking with me as I rant on about my favorite game. Um, it's not my. I can't say that it's not my favorite game now, can I? It's it's what it's one of my favorite mobile games of all time, and it's one of my favorite turn-based action RPGs, even if it is not the best because it obviously. Some of the gacha mechanics hold it down, like losing 50 50, but we're not, we're not talking about that. This was a boss fight ranking video, so let's get out of here. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys. <laughs>